How do you usually pay for pizza delivery? Well, I usually just pay by cash or card. Did you know that nine years ago, a developer bought a 20 pound pizza for 10,000 bitcoins? That'd be worth around 30 million pounds today. 30 million pounds. It better have been for a Hawaiian pizza. <laughs> money is thought to be something you can hold in your hand or put in a piggy bank. However, a relatively new form of money are cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin is a type of cryptocurrency, and most of you here are probably scared of it. But how does Bitcoin actually work? Well, you can exchange Bitcoins in a worldwide peer-to-peer -peer network. Let me explain how that works. When you download music for iTunes, you're essentially copying it off a central server and downloading it onto your computer. However, it works slightly differently when you download songs from peer-to-peer -peer networks. You're copying different parts of the same song from different people all over the world. For example, Jerry in Australia could send me the chorus, while Emma in the US could send me the verse. Unlike these songs that are shared, however, a Bitcoin is not just a file that can be copied. Otherwise, we could just make infinite money, right? Instead, Bitcoin uses a global ledger called blockchain. Blockchain is a network of computers. There isn't a state or government attached to it, I meaning there's no central authority. There's no organization keeping track of when, how, or where Bitcoins are created. The blockchain records every single transaction that's ever happened. For example, if I were to send you a Bitcoin layer, a block with the new information would be added to a chain of already existing blocks. The global ledger would then be updated. So anyone here could see the transaction we've just made. Another way to think about how blockchain works is by imagining you're playing a game of poker with some friends, but you've forgotten to bring any money or chips with you. Instead, you decide to use a piece of paper to write down the scores. Huh, okay, but what's to stop the person who's writing the scores down from cheating? See, that's where the whole concept of blockchain comes in. Imagine instead that everyone playing the game writes down the scores. So for example, we've got four players. In round one, two, and three, everyone agrees with who's won and by how many points. However, on round four, Emma says that she's won with 100 points, but everyone else says that Jerry's won with 13 points. So how does this work when actually comparing? So when Jerry's score sheet gets compared against the other scores, it gets accepted by the blockchain because it matches the ledger. However, when Emma's score sheet goes to get compared, it gets rejected by the blockchain because it doesn't match everyone else's score sheets. This is similar to how transactions can be identified as being fraudulent in the real world. So the blockchain is only updated if at least 50% of the computers hosting the global ledger agree that the transaction is legitimate. This is what makes blockchain so secure. As you can see here, Emma's block has been rejected by the blockchain. In a sec. Um, this is because most computers have identified the transaction as being fraudulent. Much like your online banking, where you have a username and password, with Bitcoin, you have a public key and a private key. Your public key is somewhat equivalent to your account number and sort code, and your private key is the same as your password. However, there's one key difference. This button doesn't exist with Bitcoin. If you've forgotten your password, I'm sorry, you've lost all of your Bitcoins. Not only can your private key be lost, but it can also be stolen. There have been many attempts and successful attacks on cryptocurrencies in the past. The most common way to access someone's Bitcoin wallet is by accessing their private key. Hackers can get your private key through phishing scams. But the bit I don't really get about Bitcoin is, if it's a currency, why don't we use it to buy pizza nowadays? Right now, people treat cryptocurrencies more as an investment rather than a currency itself. This in part has contributed to the volatility these past couple of years. Negative views surrounding cryptocurrencies have also made it hard for people to trust it. Out of personal interest, I myself invested 200 pounds in Bitcoin back in September of 2018. And let's just say it hasn't gone too well so far. <laughs> and how much is one Bitcoin? Um, I'd say I've, right now, one Bitcoin's worth around 2,813 pounds and 12 pence. But I'm not too sure because it's constantly changing, just like every other, every other asset. And do you have to buy a whole Bitcoin? Um, you can actually just buy, sell, and spend a fraction of a Bitcoin. This means you don't have to spend a whole £3,000 every time you want to buy a pizza. Now, I know if this is quite a few downsides of Bitcoin, and you may be thinking, I don't want anything to do with this. Why would I? Last year, we would have agreed with you. This is why we've changed our minds. Banks, similar to blockchain, store a ledger of their own. My question is, why should we trust banks to keep their ledger updated when we can just do it ourselves? No, there is no reset password button, but at least we have control over the information that's stored. Of course, this technology is still in its early stages,
But we don't doubt that given a few years, cryptocurrencies will be the future of money. Thank you for listening.